All right, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 19. Now, notice what the Bible says concerning about Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to look at verse 25. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the city, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Yeah. Let me show you something interesting right here. Near the Dead Sea, now I don't know what the Dead Sea looks like, so I'm just going by memory. Uh, something like this, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> so, near the Dead Sea, there's Sodom and Gomorrah. Now what's very interesting is that in Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says two things about that. You'll notice one, what did it specify when he burned the inhabitants to the ground? It says, and that which what? Grew upon the ground. Now that's very interesting. So it's specified about the things that were grown upon the ground. So it's not going to bring forth fruit again. It can't grow out of the ground again. Another thing right there is that Lot's wife, because she turned back to see the city burning behind her, she became what? A pillar of salt. Now, when you go to the Dead Sea region and you go to where Sodom and, Sodom and Gomorrah burned at the ground, what you're going to see everywhere is salt everywhere. And as a matter of fact, when you look at there, ground cannot grow. Things cannot grow from the ground anymore. Why? Because God burned them down with hell fire. That's important to understand. We're going to look at the book of Jude, please. Look at the book of Jude. So how did God burn Sodom and Gomorrah to the ground with this kind of fire? This particular kind of fire is hell fire. So this hell fire, through its sulfur and burning, it eventually turned into salt. We're going to look at the book of Jude, the book of Jude. And notice what the word of God says right here at verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example. So the burning of Sodom and Gomorrah is an example, an example of what? Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's important to note. So notice right here that the burning of Sodom and Gomorrah, it's an example of hell fire. So hell burned Sodom and Gomorrah to the ground. That's what the verse says, right? It's an example of suffering eternal hellfire, the vengeance of eternal hellfire. So hell burned Sodom and Gomorrah to the ground. And its sulfur and then its after effects made the ground not be able to produce fruit again and salt all over. And what's very interesting is that around this Dead Sea region is salt everywhere surrounding it. Now, here's the thing, is that I gave a teaching, you can see that in one of my online videos, some of you already know it, I forgot the title, it's called like Portals of Hell or something like that, yeah. but I've taught you that what I strongly believe, that one of the portals of hell is close to where Sodom and Gomorrah is. Now think about it, how did God burn all of it to the ground? With hell fire. Very simple, hell is below the earth, right? What does he have to do? All he has to do is just open up the ground, get hell to rise up, and then when hell rises up, it can cause this place to shrink down. The bottom of the city will feel the hellfire and then will fall into the ground and all those people's souls can fall into the ground. Can God do that? Oh, sure, man, sure. Because, you know why? Because Korah, Dathan, and Byron, didn't the earth open up its mouth and they fell? They fell into hell. So God can do that. It's not a problem for him to do that with Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, after all, how did hell burn it to the ground? But isn't that the reason why the Dead Sea is one of the most, uh, it has one of the uh, lowest elevations on land? So that's very interesting. It's one of the lowest elevations on land. Why is that? It's because of hell underneath it. And it sunk it down. So that's very interesting. The lower you go, the closer, closer you are to where? Hell. To hell. Now, because that's uh, what's recently discovered, 
which uh, one of our brethren here showed me, is that because there's salt all over the Dead Sea, there shouldn't be any life forms there. But now, recently, they discovered that there is now some fish swimming in the Dead Sea. That's interesting. This is found at the Scientific American. So in the Scientific American, they mention right here that when they went down scuba diving in the Dead Sea, they found some fish there. And they found that underneath, it was fresh water coming out. So there were fresh water coming out of the caverns. So it's very interesting how this Dead Sea now is getting cleaned off by one of the caverns. But here's the interesting thing is that we know below our Earth, there's a lot of strange activity below our Earth. So there's some stuff where they got some hollow earth theories, which I don't know too, uh, which I can't put a, a belief on it yet. But a lot of the things what they do teach on does uh, make sense and I believe. But I, don't, uh, but I don't hold on to a hollow earth. I want people to understand that. I'm not sure. But I do know this, is that a lot of the things what they teach, a lot of it I can agree with. So below our earth, there are some people who believe in the hollow earth. And the hollow earth supposedly teaches that in our Earth, it's below, it's not all solid, it's hollow. So if you go further down, then you will hit the entrance to hell. And some, uh, there are other hollow earthers who have different beliefs about what's down there. But then there are others who believe that there are UFOs and that there are like Nazi experiments and aliens underneath over there. Now, what's very interesting concerning this hollow Earth thing is that this is interesting right here, so I'm going to color this blue, is that uh, this is one of the portals of hell. But Eastern religions teach that there are approximately 12 portals of hell. 12 portals. Now, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true that there are 12 portals to hell. But I do believe this. I do believe that one of the portals of hell is definitely right there, where Sodom and Gomorrah uh, sunk, where Korah, Dath, and Abiram went into but if I'm going to give you other possible portals to hell, what's very interesting is that if you go across uh, the line where Sodom and Gomorrah is, and if you keep going around that through the earth, you're going to come across where the Bermuda Triangle is. So that's why the Bermuda Triangle has a lot of strange activity, which is very interesting. So it could be that's, where the, uh, that's another portal to hell. Another one is somewhere during the Himalayan mountains. And some hollow earthers teach that in this Himalayan mountains that there are Tibetan monks over there that talk about uh, communicating with voices through these dark mountains, which is very creepy. But some of these Buddhists teach and believe that if you go further down that mountain, you hit the hollow earth. And they think that's paradise. That's not the home of devils, but that's paradise. <laughs> so that's very interesting. But that could be another portal to hell is at the, uh, at the mountains over there, Himalayan mountains. But another one, which is especially all over online, which you've heard about, which is very interesting, is Antarctica. Antarctica. In Antarctica, what's very interesting is that this, uh, one of the most popular things that's, uh, that's spread out this hollow earth theory, and including e even flat earth, is that there is a pilot who flew over Antarctica and he actually went inside one of these, uh, he actually entered the hollow earth area. And then he saw all these weird uh, Nazi symbols and alien activities that were flying all over and he supposedly communicated with these aliens there. So that is very interesting. Now here's the thing, the fish from the Dead Sea are coming from where? It's coming from one of the hollow areas of the earth. Could it be, could it be, I'm not saying it is, but could it be that with these portals of hell, I don't know how many or if it's just one, but within hell, then the hollow area where it has Antarctica, it connects to the other portal right down there. Would it be? That's pretty interesting. If that's true. I don't know if it is true or not, but it is something to consider. Now here's another thing is that concerning Antarctica, what's very interesting is that 
what they discovered uh, on video, they caught on video, that when you went to inside Antarctica, there, uh, there's, there's this big planet shape or a moon shape object that was like hitting close to the ground where Antarctica was. This was really crazy. I mean, it's not just like uh, this planet or moon from a far away distance and then you go, oh, okay. No, no, this thing was hitting really close to the ground. When you zoom in, you could like see craters or something around there. It was that close. This was really something at Antarctica. Some people are like going, whoa, this is phenomenal. That's why there are uh, flat earthers that teach that Antarctica is the borderline of the earth. And then when you reach beyond that, there's a lot of strange activity out there. So the thing is, is that uh, I don't know all the details for certain about Antarctica. I mean, it's endless. One thing you got to understand is that online is that it is endless. And I've seen that stuff for three to five years, okay? Three to five years. I even know of reference Bibles that talked about this kind of stuff with uh, the flat earth and then all these conspiracies, okay? Your pastor's not dumb as you think he is, okay? I know a few pastors who know this kind of stuff too, okay? He's not dumb as you think he is. He looks at everything. Well, why don't you teach all this kind of stuff, pastor? Because I'm responsible for teaching and guiding people into all truth. And when I'm going to teach you the truth, I'm not going to do it until I'm 1,000% certain on it. And not only that, not only just because it's 100% truth, but what's edifying to the body of Christ as a whole. So your pastor is going to be careful on that one. I'm responsible for you guys. If you want to watch a channel that you can trust the person speaking, I'm not going to let you guys down. And if some of you don't like it, hey, all right, tough apples. I'm not going to let the overall people down because of that. But the, here's the interesting thing right here, is that concerning Antarctica, they found this thing that's really close, that's hitting close toward the ground. Very interesting. Now, with that thought, okay, whatever this thing is, moon or a planet or whatnot, okay, this thing, it was hitting close toward the ground of Antarctica. Now, whatever this thing is that was hitting close toward the ground at Antarctica, another interesting thing is this, is that uh, there's a guy, his last name is Rose, his last name is Rose, but he was developing machines that were known as D-wave machines. And this guy, he is actually the one who's mentioned at Forbes magazines as one of the top 50 uh, influential, uh, the most intelligent tech guys that there ever is. So his last name is Rose. Giordi, Giordi, okay? Giordi Rose. But Giordi Rose, he actually said this, which is very interesting concerning about the technology. He was talking about in his technology that all this sci-fi stuff that we see is that a lot of it is becoming more reality. But then they were in getting into quantum physics and all this kind of stuff. But they believe that they can actually reach, they can actually reach alternate areas, alternate realms. So what's very interesting concerning this teaching is that they're developing this technology uh, where it's actually close to reaching absolute zero, they say. Hmm, now this is interesting. They have this chip and they have this machine where it's actually close to reaching absolute zero and because of that, they're actually seeing and experiencing things that's beyond this current realm of the universe. And this is actually, he actually publicly spoke this, Rose. I didn't believe it until I actually saw it, but he said this very clearly uh, in public for people to hear. So if you, I think if you type his name on YouTube, that video would be the first one to pop out. And trust me, what I'm saying to you is not believable enough. You gotta watch him. When you watch him speak, then you're gonna be even more shocked than what I'm telling you right now. Yeah. But he's developing these chip and machineries that's really getting close to like absolute zero, he says. Now, if you remember my previous teachings, what did I mention is one of the ways to reach the spiritual realm. What is one of the elements? It's the frozen water. Yeah. I gave two teachings on that one. There's something about ice, something watery and ice or absolute zero where you hit the spiritual realm. 
There's something weird about that. But see, they're developing technology that can actually hit that. Now, here's the thing. Why is Antarctica a home base for a lot of strange spiritual activity? Because it's a cold area. Uh, not only that, what's also very interesting right here within this cold area is that they teach that there's some... Why did Hitler try to go to Antarctica and try to start some things there? Why, would Ru why did Russia go to Antarctica? Why did America go to Antarctica? And there are some strange things going on over there with uh, setting up technology in uh, Antarctica. Why is it, if it's true, that this pilot went into Antarctica and saw the strange advanced technology within the hollow earth area? Because when you have technology that can reach cold temperature areas, you could probably hit a spiritual realm. But if you have technology that would uh, obviously hell, it's a hot, hot place. So if you put machinery at a hot place, it's not going to function really well. But to communicate with man's technology and reconcile that with the spiritual fire, the fires of hell, is through the cold areas of technology. With fire, though, how can they communicate with fire? How they can communicate with fire and communicate to hell as a result is through religion. So there is religion or spiritism, cult. They make a big deal about fire, looking at the bonfire, sweat lodges, etc. and etc. So you can finally communicate with spirits. Technology can't do that uh, with reaching the spiritual realm. So you have to resort to religion and spiritism here. But then what science can do to reach the spiritual realm would be through the cold. This is very interesting. Now, when you look at all this, this would make sense why Satan can get both religion and science together. He, how he can communicate with both of them. How hell can communicate through both of them is through the cold areas and then the machinery and science. That's where they can operate and work. And then with right over here to the religious areas, he can communicate to them in the spir spiritual realms through fire. And in the Sodom and Gomorrah area, that's where the heat is. And that's where it had access to the portal of hell. That's what I'm certain about. Antarctica, possibly a portal to hell. And if it is, it's through the cold gate that they, uh, that they access hell. Thus, you have a cold gate, cold portal, and then you got the hot gate or the hot portal. Now, here's something that uh, I'm giving a theory right here. This big circular planet or moon or whatever it is that's reaching close to the floor of Antarctica, whether it be a moon or a planet, what I believe is this, is that, well, not what I believe, what I theorize what it could be is that because of Rose's technology, Rose's technology that uh, can access the spiritual realm through the cold, and because of weird technology going on in Antarctica, it could be that when they're trying to access the spiritual realm there, they actually reach the spiritual realm. And through that spiritual realm, they saw this planet or this moon where Satan and his minions are inhabiting. Now, let's say that's the moon that they, through this spiritual realm, it opens up that they see. Kind of like what the prophets, like John, the apostle, and like the other prophets, how did they see heaven? How did they access to God? Because they had to have an opening to see the world, the spiritual world and the spiritual realm. And that's what Satan simply did right here. He can simply do that as well. He can actually access a dimension and a portal where you can see the spiritual realm as well. But that's his home, not God's home. The prophets of God, they saw God's home. They had access to God's spiritual realm through his own kind of plane. This is what Satan did through his own plane. But this would also be interesting and kind of make sense with in the moon. There are, there are some, uh, there's this one person from Stanford who actually mentioned that within the moon there were some interesting waters underneath and caverns and a lot of alien activity where the moon was. 
So it could be that the moon could, uh, not only that, what's very interesting is that if you look at the moon, there are some people who actually show these pyramid structures at the moon. That matches with, and guess what? There are those similar pyramid structures you see at the Bermuda Triangle below, near the Bermuda Triangle. And then over there at the Orient area, and remember the Orient area is one of the portals to hell as well. So the, you saw some pyramids discovered at the Orient area, South America, and then obviously Egypt. It could be that's where Satan and his minions, that's one of their home bases. And in order to communicate with scientists in the physical realm, they go through Antarctica, their portal. Concerning in this area right here, he communicates right here by opening up the portal of hell. It could be that maybe, it could be maybe that in the millennium, God will open up, there's going to be a humongous fault line that will go all over Antarctica through the Bermuda Triangle, through Israel and all that, that can open up hell. Could be that way too. So it could be one big giant portal then. Doesn't have to necessarily be 12 portals. Very interesting stuff. But that's why, uh, let's close it with this one at 1 Corinthians 13. Let's close it with this one at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I sum it up with this in accessing the spiritual realm. Because if you look at Ezekiel chapter 1, how did Ezekiel communicate to God? Through this glass. It is through this frozen yeah. glass that he communicated Yay. with God. Yeah, in Ezekiel great. chapter 1. Antarctica, through this reflection of that glass, they can communicate with the spiritual realm. Another thing is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What does it say? At verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Did you see that? It is through a glass we only see the spiritual things partly. It's an access. It's a gateway. That's very interesting. That's the reason why John, when he went up to heaven, how did he access to God up to heaven? Through that sea of glass. He had to go through that sea of glass to finally access to God. There is something about frozen water where you communicate with the spiritual realm right here. It's very interesting. And then if it is some kind of cavern underneath that goes underneath Antarctica, it might connect over here through this Dead Sea area. It could be one humongous fault line somewhere that goes through all the areas of demonic activity.